Hello everyone, this is Sean from EverythingVM.com. Today we're going to be talking about OpenFiler. OpenFiler is a uh, Linux-based open source um, storage solution. It gives you iSCSI, LUNs, NFS mounts, uh, SMB shares, etc. So it's a real versatile solution. Uh, gives you high availability and is real expandable. Uh, there's, it's both uh, there's a free version and there's a pay for version. Uh, the pay for version offers various features such as you can uh, buy support solutions uh, depending on the size of your storage setup. Uh, they vary in price greatly. If you want to see them, just simply click on the purchase add on section of the openfiler.com website. Uh, to use the free version, you can simply go to download openfiler free, this link right here. As you can see, there's various uh, versions of it. Uh, in this today, we're going to be using the x86 installation. That's the 32-bit version. There is also 64-bit inst um, install media, and you can download a VMware virtual appliance of OpenFiler if you'd want to. Uh, pretty much skip the install phase. Uh, but today, we're just going to go over the install, and then in subsequent videos, we will go over the configuration of OpenFiler. Now, I've already downloaded the ISO, so I'm going to skip this part. And here I've created a virtual machine of OpenFiler. You don't have to run it in a virtual machine. You can run it on physical hardware. You might even might even be a better thing to run it on physical hardware, but I've chosen to run it on a virtual machine because this is mainly just a test scenario. Uh, as you can see, I've given it one gigabyte of RAM. Uh, you can give it less or more, uh, but less than a gigabyte, and you'll start getting some uh, warnings about uh, low memory. Uh, as you can see down here, I've given it two SATA drives. Uh, one is, will be the system drive, and one will be the drive with all the data on it. Uh, I've found that it works better with SATA drives. You can make it work with parallel ATA drives, but since it's a virtual machine, there's no reason to not just go ahead and, and do SATA drives. So it's uh, since my virtual machine is already all set up, let's go ahead and start it. If you want to know how to create a virtual machine, simply watch my VirtualBox tutorial also on this site. Okay, here is the first screen for the install. We're just going to hit enter to go in the graphical mode. There's also a text mode in case your machine is having trouble dealing with the graphical, mo the graphical mode or if you want to do some scripts to um, help the installation along. Now it just takes a little bit to get into the uh, to get going with the install. Now the first screen is where it's going to ask if we want to test the media. We're going to hit skip now. Uh, if you were burning onto a physical media like a CD or DVD, you might want to go ahead and scan it so you don't get halfway through the install and have it fail. Uh, but you know, in my case, I've already downloaded it. I already know it's a good copy, uh, and so we're we're just going to skip the scanning. All right, we're now we're in the installer. Uh, we're going to go just go ahead and hit next. And I'm speaking English, so we'll stick with English. We'll hit next. All right, and now is the partitioning screen. Now, uh, I usually use the automatic partition screen, but you do need to pay attention to what it's doing. Uh, you can't just go through and click next, next, next. Here it's just warning me it's going to erase all the data on the drives. That's fine. We'll click yes twice because we've got two drives. Uh, here it lists uh, serial disk A and serial disk B. Let's uncheck serial disk B because we want to leave that one unpartitioned. Uh, if you do partition this one uh, at this stage, once OpenFiler is done installing, you won't actually be able to create a volume on that drive. So then you'll have all this disk space allocated that you won't be able to use. So let's go ahead and click uh, next. All right, and as you can see, it's partitioned it. We've got 102 megabytes for partition the first partition, the boot partition. We've got 13 gigabytes for the root partition, and we've got about 2 gigabytes for the swap partition. As you can see, uh, serial disk B is 100% uh, free space. That's the way we want it. And so let's go ahead and click Next. Now here's where we can specify uh, an IP address. Let's go ahead and click Edit and uncheck Configure DHCP. And 
Now we could enter an IP address and a net mask. I'm going to leave it on DHCP and say OK because since this is just a test machine, uh, it's, it's fine just being DHCP. But if it was a production machine, you definitely want to specify an IP address. And let's go ahead and give it a name of Open Filer VM. And now if we had specified an IP address, this section right here would not be grayed out uh, for the gateway, primary DNS, etc. And you would want to make sure to specify that with the settings for your network. So let's go ahead and click Next and specify our time zone at this point by clicking over here. We're now we're in the Los Angeles time zone and click Next. All right, now it's asking for the root password. Uh, let's go ahead and enter the root password. Now, in most instances, most instances after the install is complete, you won't need the root password. Uh, but make sure to write it down just in case, because if if you have any problems with your installation, you very well could need it to log in and and make some changes to get your system to boot or or fix it after a patch broke your system or or whatnot. Alright, we're just about done with the install, so let's go ahead and hit next one more time. And now it's just going to partition the drives, it's going to format the drives, and then it will actually perform the install. Uh, at the end of this, it's going to prompt us to restart, so I'm just going to pause the recording until we get to the point where it prompts us to restart, and then we'll resume from there. Alright, we're back. As you can see, the installation is completed, and it's just prompting us to reboot, so let's go ahead and say reboot and it will now restart. It's going to take a couple minutes to restart, uh, but in the meantime I'll let you know how what's going to happen afterwards. Uh, after it's done restarting, we will be at a command prompt where we can log in or it will also list the uh, the uh, IP address of the system and the uh, URL to go to in your web browser in order to manage OpenFiler. So I'm just going to pause the video recording until we get to that point, and then we'll resume from there. All right, we're back. Uh, as you can see, there's a login screen here, and here is the URL for the management interface. Uh, at the moment, the only thing you could log in using uh, at this command prompt is the root username and password. Uh, at this, but we're we don't need to do that at the moment. So let's just go ahead and go to this URL and so we can get to the configuration page. So it's https colon slash slash the IP address listed colon and then port 446 and here's the login username open filer and the default password is just password and we log in and here is the configuration screen. So uh, just a quick rundown of where everything is. There's the services tab where you can enable the various uh, services that OpenFiler can do. Uh, as you can see there's Samba, NFS, HTTP, WebDAV, FTP, iSCSI. Uh, it can be both an iSCSI target server and initiator. Uh, what that means is if it's a target server that means that um, you connect to it for storage and if it's an initiator it connects to something else for storage. Uh, so that's one way that this can be very expandable. So uh, we're out of time for now, uh, but please check back for our future videos. We will be covering uh, how to configure the various services of OpenFiler. If you have any questions or if there's anything specific you'd like me to cover, please contact me using the Contact Us section at the top of the screen at everythingvm.com.